Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com and it's house renovation time. This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt this repair. Today I'm going to be switching out this vintage 1960 switch. Listen to it. Remember, I don't know if you remember these old switches, but they were pretty noisy. And a lot of people switched them out for quieter switches in the 70s and 80s. But this is an original 1960 vintage switch. And I'm going to change it out and I'm going to put in this Leviton Federal Specification Grade switch. So uh, let's get started. First, I've already turned off the circuit breaker. This is my Fluke 1AC voltage detector. I'm going to put it in here and I do a double check. I've already turned off the circuit breaker, but right now I'm double checking to make sure that there's no hot wires in here. Okay, so I'll just put my impact driver right here and take out one screw. That's an old flathead screw. The other one has a Phillips, so I'll take that out too. Here's the old 1960 switch. That's what it looks like on the back. Okay, this is a push-in type switch. And so I'm just going to cut them right here. Okay, I've got nice long wires to work with. Sometimes in old boxes, the wires are pretty short. This isn't bad at all. One thing I like to do is take off some of this old paper. And I always vacuum out the box. Stripping old wire from 1960 is not as easy as stripping new wire. There we go. I have now turned back on the circuit breaker to make a couple of important tests. Okay, this is my fluke voltage detector again. And this is the hot wire right here. So this is what we call the line wire. And this is what we call the load wire. This is the wire that's going to the light because the light is the load. This is my Fluke 117 electrician's meter. I have these Wago lever nuts on these wires for safety because the electricity is on right now for this test. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the red lead of my Fluke 117 electrician's meter and put it into one of the ports of the lever nut. And then I'm going to take the other lead and put it right to the back of the metal box. And see, I'm getting 121.1 volts AC. So this white wire is hot, and the metal box provides a return path to ground. So when you put your leads across them, uh, you get about 120 volts AC. So what I'm going to do is run a pigtail from this box and connect it really good to the metal box. And that will be my ground for my new switch. What's happening in this 1960 metal box is that they ran a ground wire to the back of the box and attached it to the back of the box in the wall. Here's a picture that I took of a different box in the same house. Now, not all the boxes in this house are bonded and grounded like this. This one in the photograph it happens to be in the laundry area, so it had ground wires coming to the back of it. And the one that I'm working on now, replacing the vintage switch, has the ground wires because that is on an exterior wall. A lot of the interior receptacles and switch boxes had no grounding or bonding whatsoever. So this box is grounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap a 1032 screw into this metal box. I'm using a combination drill and tap bit. Okay, so I've got my 1032 bit on my drill and I'm gonna go ahead and find a good spot right there. Pull it out nice and straight. Okay, so I'm gonna take my grounding pigtail, put it in my newly tapped hole. So that's down there good and tight. This white wire and this black wire make up what we call a switch 
loop. Back before 2011, it was okay to do this, have a white wire and a black wire in a switch box, and you were supposed to color code the white wire to black so that people would know that it's a switch loop. It's not a black wire and a neutral wire. That's the first thing I did here is I uh, went ahead and color coded it. I just used my Sharpie and color coded it. You can use black tape and so forth. This switch provides two different ways of wiring. You can just put the wire straight in to the terminal and then screw the screw down or you can go around the terminal and then tighten the screw down. So I'm going to elect to go straight in. I'll start with the ground. Let's put it right in there. And tighten it down securely. And then it doesn't matter which wire goes next. We're just uh, breaking the flow of electrons when the switch is off, that's an open circuit, the current isn't going on the load wire to the light, so the light's off. When the switch is on, that is a closed circuit, and the current is going to the light, so it turns the light on. Put this right in here. This is called back wiring. This is not backstabbing. Backstabbing is a totally different thing. This, this, uh, your more expensive devices will generally provide a way to back wire. Okay, so we've got the black wire in the second terminal. Tighten it down securely. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some black electrician's tape around the switch for safety. So now we'll go ahead and put her back in. Now I'm going to install a screwless wall plate. So this is the base plate. It goes on just like that. There are two screws. It's called screwless, but there are two screws. And then this is the cover. Just pushes on just like that. So the next thing we're going to do is turn the circuit breaker on. Okay, we turn off, turn on, turn it off. It works great. I'll put links in my video description for the Fluke 1AC voltage sensor and the Fluke 117 electrician's meter. I'll put a link for the switch you saw it installed in the video, which is the professional 15 and 20 amp heavy duty switch. And I'll put a link for the ideal combination drill and tapping kit. I'll put a link for the atomic drill and driver set. I'll put a link for the ideal grounding pigtails, Weeha 1000 volt insulated number two Zeno drive screwdriver. And last but not least, I'll put a link for the Eaton screwless wall plates. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.